Are you a smart home buyer? Well, in today's episode, I am going to reveal the facts that you need to know to become a smart buyer here in the Villages, Florida. If you are new to this channel, my name is Robin Cavallaro. I'm a licensed realtor and your buyer's agent. I primarily represent buyers here in Florida. Let me help you find the perfect home. But before we start, I want you to check this out. Visit my website at robincavallaro.com and you can begin your home search. You can search by section, whether it's Marion County, south of 44, uh, between the sixes. It also allows you to select number of bedrooms, price range, um, or you can search the villages as a whole. You will get email notifications when a home price has been reduced. You also can select a market update for the section as well as any open houses that are taking place when you might be in town. To check your email, you will get text messages and emails with me with notes. I've made some videos in the notes to keep you up to date on things that are going on. You wanna give me a call? I am an expert here in the Villages, Florida and your buyer's agent. Back to the regularly scheduled program. All right, so number one on the list of being a smart home buyer Know your limit. Please set your limit within maybe five to $10,000, but just be careful that you don't overspend because you have to remember you are in the retirement years, even if you are still working full time, don't overspend. Make sure you have money to go out and enjoy the activities. Play pickleball, play tennis, take up golf, go dance in the squares, enjoy dinners, maybe even travel. Don't spend all of your money on a home that you are now going to be chained to because you got a little carried away in the buying process. And I see it happen all of the time. People come down with one thing in mind and whatever that is, and they completely change. But in that change process, what happens is they've spent so much time um, Sorry, I had to check and make sure that that was still on. Uh, they spend so much time investigating and discovering and researching that they have all of their research based on these facts. And then they throw themselves an audible and they switch tracks. And it becomes a little scary, a little problematic, and you're going through some muddy waters. So please, please keep your budget in mind. Allow for a little bit extra, maybe, in your discovery phase of trying to buy home here in the villages so you're not so scared and petrified when it comes to making that purchase to actually pulling the trigger. Um, number two, and I talk about this all the time, be flexible. And what I mean by that is not necessarily just price, but location, size, style of home, how much yard you want, do you want a view, no view, fenced in, not fenced in, because there are a lot of opportunities with different homes that you might find are suitable if you keep your options flexible. And I will use, uh, let's say a courtyard villa to be um, for an example. Um, people with pets or they want some privacy, love that courtyard villa. But sometimes you might be able to find a home that is on the other side of courtyard villas and there's a wall behind you. Now, if you have a pet and there's a wall behind that home, you could take and maybe put some shrubs um, between your home and the wall to give yourself a little, it'll uh, give your pet a little extra security. All right, sorry about that. That was a child alert. Um, so just be flexible because there might be solutions in a different style home that you might not think about that I will think about. So leave your options open, especially moving from the exterior of the home. Let's move to the interior of the home. Um, I, and I tell all my buyers this, I do not follow the village's style models of homes. And here's why, because they'll call a home, a specific model name up North. And it's the same model down South has a completely different name. And you might have researched and saw, I don't know, let's just say a whispering pine. You saw whispering pine and you loved it, but down here it looks different. So, you know, you really have to look at the interior photos. 
If you're not sure, call me because I can see more from photos than you might be able to because I'm in the homes all the time and I can spot a dog. I can spot where their carpets are in bad shape. I can see from photos sometimes if the kitchens are in bad shape. So I can at least give you that information because that might be the opportunity that you're looking for, something that needs a little bit of renovation. But my eyes on the pictures, on the photographs from the MLS will help. So please use me. I want to be your resource here. Um, size of home. Um, size of home is going to be directly correlated with the price. Uh, the larger the home, the lower the price you can expect a project. The higher the price, the smaller the home you probably could just walk right into. You have to decide what the best opportunity is for you. Um, I see buyers all the time, they'll get enticed with, you know, they're looking at 350 and they want three bedrooms. But then what happens is they see a three bedroom home that comes up, let's say for 325. And, but the home needs 30, $40,000 worth of work. Now, do you want to do all that work and make it your own? Maybe because that home for 350 might not completely work for you, but you don't mind having to completely renovate the home. So sometimes when you look at that 325 home, if you spent the 350, 360, you can walk right in and start enjoying yourself where you might spend months trying to renovate. And you know what happens whenever you start spending money on a home, um, you'll budget for light fixtures and then you blow that budget and then your budget for a kitchen, of course, that goes out the window. So you might end up spending more than you think you will. So just be flexible, keep your options open. If you have questions about properties, call me. Um, okay, so third, I wanna talk about taxes, bond, CDD. Um, every home you will be able to find out, maybe it might not be readily available for you, but I can find out the information. Sometimes it's in the realtor's notes, what the bond balance is, what the annual payment is, what your CDD fee is, and um, what the total property taxes will be. And when my buyers are looking, I always go to the county's website to do an estimator to figure out what your new taxes will be because, sorry, I had, had battery issues. All right, so um, back to taxes. Make sure that you, your realtor, or if you're going to use me, uh, I check the current tax rate to see what the taxes are on the home because you can look at the MLS listing and two homes side by side are going to have two different tax rates because you don't know, let's say home A, taxes are 2000, home B, taxes are 3500. Home A, they've been in that property for 10 years. Property B, they just moved in a year ago. Property A, they're getting taxed at a lower dollar amount than property B. So the taxes are different. Could be um, they have a homestead exemption. It could be they're a disabled vet and they're not paying any tax. They may just have a bond. So you need to use the tax rate on the MLS listing as a guideline, but it's not gospel. Uh, you absolutely need to check and I, produced a video all about the taxes here in the villages. Be sure you watch it. It's enlightening. You will look at the villages a little bit differently once you watch that video. All right, so um, the bond and the CDD. The bonds are lower up north than they are down south. That's because most of them have been paid down over the years. They've been paid, they're amortized over 30 years. So it is a 30 year bond and you can find all that information out at districtgov.org. That's the website right there. There's an amortization schedule. You have to know the lot number or the section the home is in, which is available on the tax bill. If you have any questions, you wanna know anything about that, call me. I will be able to walk you through it. Um, but the tax, the bonds are obviously paid down and they were lower way back when up north. Let, I'm just gonna use Patio Villa for an example. So Patio Villa, 
maybe 20 years ago, the original bond was only six or seven thousand dollars because in today's time that might be about fifteen thousand dollars. So um, those homes will have the bonds low or paid off. Um, so, for example, my home, the bond balance, I think, on this patio bill is about twelve thousand. Then and it's just five years old. The new patio villas, the bond is twenty three thousand dollars. So uh, just think about that. Um, nothing wrong with buying a new home, but you need to be armed with ammunition on how much your bond, your CDD, and your taxes will be. The bond stays with the home. So sometimes if you find in a newer section the bond paid off, consider yourself lucky because it just really doesn't always pay to pay the bond off. You really need to um, assess that with your financial advisor. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. But um, uh, the bond does not stay with you. It follows the home. So think about that if you are considering paying the bond off. Find out what the interest rate is on that municipal bond that you're paying, and that's districtgov.org, and then you can make a better decision. The CDD never goes away. Uh, there are a few sections that do not have a CDD, but for the most part, they do. We are not an HOA. We are a CDD. There's a big difference. Um, in our community, I'm not gonna get into the weeds about an HOA, but in our community, you own your home, you maintain your own home. And what I mean by that is you pay for your own water, sewer, trash, amenity fee, you pay your own cable, you pay your own lawn care. There is no being or group or board that collects money and pays this for you. The CDD pays to maintain the common areas that assessment Along with the bond, are assessments paid with your tax bill? And when you see that, that's an annual payment. It is not a monthly payment. I have people get that confused. The only monthly fee that you pay here will be your amenity fee. If you have any questions about taxes, okay. You also, and just a little bonus tip here, please know your tax rates before you make an offer. Because I have so many people tell me, oh, I'm gonna get a new house, I'm gonna get a new patio villa down in Denby or wherever it is because it's only 247,000, 240, whatever, thousand dollars. I just got off the phone with someone. The tax bill was gonna be almost $7,000. So remember that, think about that. It might not affect you, you might be fine with it, but I like for everyone to have all the necessary information so you make a good buying decision. Um, and that's why I am your expert here in the villages and your buyer's agent. Um, let's talk about wanting to purchase home here and you have a home to sell. So if you have a home to sell, there are several ways for you. I just noticed that light was glaring <laughs> in the TV, so I had to turn it off. Okay. Um, if you already have a home to sell, some, there are different levels of where a seller will accept your offer based on you having a home to sell. Number one, they're gonna to wanna to see at least that it's on the market. Number two, your best, one of your better opportunities will be it's on the market and under contract and they've made their escrow payment. So now they're, it's moderately secure transaction. It's, you've gone under, it's listed, you've gone under contract, you've gone through your escrow payment and now you've gone through the inspection process and we're past the inspection phase, that's when most of your sellers will say, yes, I will accept your offer with a home sale contingency. Because you have to remember, as a seller, if they're accepting your offer, whatever the terms that you all agree upon, they have to take the home off the market. And by taking a home on the market, they could say, yes, we'll accept backup offers, but sometimes people don't see that. Sell a buyer's searching might not see that, and your house might get passed over. Um, so most sellers are going to want to see you at least in contract, under agreement, and through inspection before they're going to accept a home sale contingency. And there are other little caveats that can go into a home sale contingency. And on a case-by-case -case basis, I don't want to get into too much detail. This is kind of an overview of what it is to be a smart buyer here. Because I can tell you, if you were my seller, I wouldn't let you accept an offer that their home isn't on the market because I hear this all the time. My home's gonna sell in two days. 
Okay, it might. I hope it does for you, but if it doesn't, what if it's on the market a month? Now, these people have taken their home off the market and your home still hasn't sold. So you have to understand it from their perspective. And that's how I would give advice. I give you advice making an offer as if I were selling your home. I'd say, you know, you can do that, but they're probably not going to accept it. We can make the offer and see if they do because all they can do is say no, but just be aware that you might not like the outcome and expect to negotiate when you're making offers, expect to price negotiate buyer and seller side. So don't get annoyed if they don't accept your first offer and they come back because we usually come, come up with a reasonable and amicable price point where everybody's happy and we can move forward and get you in your home. Okay. Um, next, have your finances ready. Um, if your cash we need proof of funds, and that's a letter from a bank or note or a copy of your statement from any kind of statement showing you have the funds to, to complete the transaction. Now, if you're going to be a cash buyer and say you have all the money in your Charles Schwab account, we can use that as proof of funds, but you don't have to use those monies, that fund, to purchase the home. You can take and cash in your IRA, cash in a CD, you know, wherever else you have money, you can use that money. You don't have to use it from the specific location where we sent with the offer that you have the funds, but we just have to prove you have it and you can get it from whatever other um, account that you have that has enough money to cover that transaction. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, please call me. Um, your financial advisor may tell you you have enough money to pay cash, but he may say, you know, if you have the means, take out a loan, take out a small loan right now while you're still working, while you can do that. So make sure you consult with your financial advisor before you enter the transaction. Cause I did have this just happen. My buyers put in an offer for cash. And then about a week or two in, they decided they wanted to finance half of it, which the sellers agreed to because we were still able to get it closed on time. If you say you're going to purchase with cash, the buyer, the sellers have to, and you want to change it to finance, the sellers have to agree to it and they don't have to. They can say, well, there's too many other obstacles that can happen. No, we want this cash sale. And you've already entered into the contract telling them it was a cash sale. You have to proceed with cash. Now, if you're finance and we check off the finance box on your contract or your offer and you decide, I think I want to pay cash. <laughs> Ask no brainer. That's not a problem. Cash is still king. But just remember, if you say you're going to finance and you want to pay cash, okay. If you say you're cash and you want to switch to finance, it could be problematic. Speak to your financial advisor before entering into any agreement. If you have any questions, call me. Also, I've had a couple people want an attorney to review the contract or they wanted to make changes to the contract. It's a legal document. I am not allowed to change that contract. I can't mark anything up that's on there. That's already in legal language. I can check boxes, uncheck boxes, but I can't change the terms of the contract. If you want the terms of the contract changed, well, good luck probably getting someone to accept it, but you would have to consult an attorney and you would have to have him either change, he or she change it, make the necessary changes. And that's not saying the seller will accept it. So, but you are always, always have the opportunity to have your attorney review a contract. Lawyer, we are not attorneys, so we cannot offer you legal advice and we cannot change a legal document. Um, know your contract. Um, again, we just discussed that about uh, finances with, um, you know, if you're going to be cash or, or uh, financing. But also with repairs. Now here we primarily use a standard contract. The Villages uses it, so most of the MLS realtors use it. And what that says is the seller will make so much in repairs if it's left blank up to one and a half percent. Um, but you're bound to that contract. So you can't get out. If you don't like how the inspection comes back, unless there are major 
costs involved, then you're bound to that contract and you have to keep moving forward. I'm finding right now, a lot of sellers are giving pushback. I'm wanting to make repairs, even though they're on this standard contract. And, you know, I would say uh, before, this is, this is my opinion. If you're going to enter a standard contract, and this is like if, if this is a listing agent's decision, and they should consult their seller. If you decide that you're going, they decide they're going to use a standard contract, but they don't want to make a lot of repairs, they should put that number in the realtor's notes so I can tell you, my buyer, hey, this is a standard contract and they'll make repairs, but they only want to make repairs up to $500 or they only want to make repairs up to $1,000. So you know what you're getting into. And most of the time, it's not a big deal because there are not a lot of repairs that need to be made because the listing agent goes in and you can kind of tell a house that needs a lot of repairs when just by looking at it. But if you go in and it needs a lot of repairs, you can't back out because it's a standard contract, but they will actually put it on an as-is contract. As-is contract, the seller does not have to pay to repair anything, but you can negotiate it once the inspection's completed. But you can get out within the inspection period. You can back out for whatever reason. So keep that in mind. These are all very uh, in-depth topics that if you are interested and want to call me and have a conversation, please go on my website here, check it out. And you can book an appointment with me, book a time, a call, um, and it'll send out a reminder, mostly for me <laughs> to remind to call you. But, um, and we can discuss whatever it is that you need. So just make sure that you know your contracts and you are very familiar with the process. Also, and I'm going to plug my friend's business here, if the home needs repairs, there are tons of contractors here that can make all of the repairs you need, whether you're here or not. But my friend, Tina Verderosa, she has a business where she's a project manager. So if you're on-site or off-site and you have projects that you want managed, you would like her to find contractors for you, make sure they're doing the job, they're on the job, everything's completed. You can hire her to manage uh, that project for you, send you updates. So here's her phone number. Her name is Tina. I've been friends with her for a couple of years now. And um, you can give her a call and she can help you through that process. Because it is a scary endeavor when you walk into a house and it's like, Foo -hoo, hello, it needs a lot of repairs. Um, that, um, how do you get that accomplished? And there are lots of ways to get that done, so don't be afraid. And that is all I have for you today. I'm Robin Cavallaro, I'm a realtor here in Florida, your buyer's agent and expert in the villages, Florida. If you want to sell, buy a home, or I can list your house, but um, give me a call. I'd be happy to be a resource. Thank you very much for watching. And if you like this video, I want you to check this next one out. I think you're going to like it. All right, until next time, I'll see ya.